everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns. Welcome to video three for the Amaryllis Toad. We're going to start by sewing up our side pockets. So you'll need your uh, two exterior side pocket pieces, your two lining pieces, and you'll also need uh, your faux piping pieces. So to start, we're going to take our faux piping and we're going to fold it in half, wrong sides together, along the entire length. Grab my clips. And then you're gonna go over to your machine and you're just gonna do a quick basting stitch to keep the, the faux piping folded in half. And you're gonna do this for both pieces. Okay, so you just do a quick basting stitch along the raw edges here just to keep it folded in half and I'm going to do the same thing for the second piece. Okay, so I base stitched both faux piping pieces. Um, I used a contrasting thread so that you could see it um, and I basted about one eighth of an inch seam allowance from the raw edges. Now take one of your exterior pieces and place this faux piping along the top edge. And then go over to your machine and once again base stitch it in place. You can just use a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and base stitch it in place along the top edge. Okay, so now the faux piping is basted to the top edge of my side pocket piece and I'm just going to take the matching lining piece and line them up nicely and clip all three layers together. Well actually there's two layers of faux piping. And then I'm going to go over to my machine and this time I'm going to use a, my regular stitch length and I'm going to sew along the top edge with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, which is our typical seam allowance for assembly. Okay, so I've sewn everything together. Now I'm just going to flip the exterior and the lining pieces so they're wrong sides together. And I'm going to press them. And I'm trying not to, if you're using cork or vinyl for the faux piping, I do my best not to burn that part because um, if you're using vinyl, it'll melt. Okay, and then I'm going to go over to my machine, and this time I'm just going to top stitch um, along the top edge here of the um, of the the top edge of the the fabric, not the the faux piping, uh, with a one eighth of an inch seam allowance from the this top edge of the fabric. Okay, so I've top stitched the top here of my pockets, and now you're going to take one of your uh, exterior side panels and you're just going to line up the bottom edge of your pocket with the bottom edge of the side panel. Clip that in place and I'm going to do both of them at the same time. Okay and then you'll go over to your machine and you'll just base stitch the bottom edge uh, you can use a one quarter inch or a one eighth of an inch seam allowance, it doesn't really matter. So just the bottom edge here. I base stitched the bottom edge and now I'm just going to flip this over. And we're going to do the same to base stitch the, uh, the edges, the outer edges of the pocket to the side panel. But this time, you'll notice that when we do this, it's going to make the pocket stick upwards, which is what, you, what we want, actually. Okay, 
Okay, so this is what we want. We want the the pocket to come outwards. So you can probably see a little bit better this way. So I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm just going to quickly base stitch uh, along both sides of the pocket for both of the side panels. Okay, so I have both of my side pockets ready on, um, and sewn to my side panel pieces. I'm just going to set them aside briefly and I'm going to take both of my three quarter inch D-rings and my D-ring connectors and I sort of went ahead here and um, what I did was because I'm not using fabric for my D-ring connectors um, I folded uh, both of the um, the long the outer longer edges in towards the center of the connector piece wrong sides together and I did that on both sides so both halves are folded in towards the center and I glued them in place if you're using fabric instead, you would do the same thing, except you wouldn't glue it, you would press it in place. And then you should end up with a strap piece that's three inches high by three quarters of an inch wide. And then once you're, if you've done cork or vinyl like me, once the, the glue is dry, you're going to sew along both sides of this connector, this uh, connector strap piece uh, with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Um, and if you're using um, the the fabric or or the vinyl or the cork, it doesn't matter. You're going to sew along both longer edges with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so this I've I've sewn this D ring connector, and I'm just going to take one of my uh, D rings, and I'm going to slip the strap piece through it, and then you fold the strap piece towards the wrong side. Now the wrong side is where you have the raw edges meeting at the center. And then I fold this piece as well. And I want the shorter ends of the strap piece to meet on the wrong side of the connector. And then I'll just use some clips and hold that in place. Like so. Okay, and then you take one of your side panels and you'll remember um, in the previous video we made some marks at the top of this panel I made them in white but they're not really showing so you have your center mark and then you have your zipper mark so the center mark is going to help you with the placement of your d-ring connector and then you'll also need to use a ruler I'm going to to me. So you want to place this the top edge of the strap. Never mind the D-ring, ignore the D-ring. But the top edge should be one and a quarter inch from the top edge of your side panel. And you want the center of the strap to be aligned with the center mark you made at the top. Now I don't want this to move, so I'm going to use a very small piece of double-sided tape. I'm using a small piece because I just want I just want to hold it in place and I don't want to I don't want to sew over the tape. Okay. Remove the tape back in. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew the connector in place and I'm going to use uh, a rectangle box of stitching. So I'm going to sew underneath the D-ring, but don't get too close to the D-ring or you'll have some skip stitches. So across underneath the ring, down the one side, and then across along the bottom, and then up to the other side. And then you can either backstitch or you can tie off your threads, which, whichever method you prefer. Um, I usually backstitch if I'm using vinyl or cork. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. Um, I did my rectangle box of stitching to attach my D-ring connector to the side panel. Now I'm going to repeat these steps and I'm going to sew the second 
uh, D-ring connector to the second side panel. Okay, for the next step, you'll want to take both of your, um, your front zipper panel pieces, so these are mirror image pieces, both of your exterior zipper facing pieces, uh, your exterior zipper facing pattern piece, and your front zipper panel pattern piece. Um, now we're just going to start by marking the location of our connectors. So I'm just going to punch out these two holes. I put a piece of scotch tape and now I'm going to punch out these two holes because we're going to use them to mark the location of our uh, strap connectors. And there's my marking pencil. So make sure that your you have your pattern piece on the in the right on the right piece. So make sure your your angled piece of your pattern piece is on the angled side of your front zipper panel. And I'm just marking the location of the two dots. Now flip the pattern piece over and do the same on the other piece. Okay, we can set that pattern piece aside now. Now you're going to take your exterior zipper facing pattern piece and we're just going to cut out that, that shape and try to do a good job cutting along those dash lines because this will be marking uh, the opening of your zipper pocket. Okay, so you can get rid of that. Now flip your exterior zipper facing pieces over and you're going to use this to draw the shape of the zipper opening. And you again, you're doing, uh, you need to do this mirror image. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to draw it on this piece. Now this, it's less important to draw a mirror image if you're not using a directional print, but my print has a direction. So I'm making sure that I, I do this mirror image. Okay. And then you'll take this piece and you need to have that shape along the straight edge of your front zipper panel. And you'll notice that um, if you remember in the interfacing section, we did a cutout for your zipper pocket opening in the fusible fleece. That should line up with the shape that you just drew on your exterior zipper facing piece. So I need some pins. I'm going to pin this in place. because I really do not want this to move when I'm sewing. Okay, and I'll do the same thing for this side, except you'll see it's mirror image. And then you'll go over to your machine, use a shorter stitch length, um, about a 2.5, and you just start up here back stitch, sew along the shape. Take your time because you want to sew a nice curve um, at this edge and this edge. And then when you get to the end here, you make sure that you back stitch again. And you're going to do the same thing for this pe these two pieces as well. Okay, so I've sewn along the shape that we drew and it's through both layers. And if you did a good job lining up, you'll see that the stitching is on the inside edge of the fusible fleece on the wrong side. So now I'm just going to trim away on along the inside, leaving about a quarter inch of fabric on the inside of the stitching. It doesn't have to be super precise. We're just really removing um, some of the fabric so that we can 
we can turn the facing. Okay, so I trimmed away a bit and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip on the inside, clip or notch. I don't find it makes too much of a difference here. You just need to do it around the, the curves so that when you flip the facing over you have a nice curved edge. And I'll do the second one um, afterwards. Now you're just going to take the facing and flip it to the wrong side. And then I kind of, I dampen my fingers and I roll, I roll the seam and I press. And I just do a tiny bit at a time because I really want a nice opening for my zipper. And then I always find it's a good idea to flip it over and press it from the wrong side as well. Okay, so this piece is ready and I'll pause the video and I'll do the same for you. Okay, so both uh, zipper openings are ready. I'm just going to set these aside for now and you'll want to get your two seven inch zippers or nine inches of zipper tape and you'll want your exterior zipper pocket lining pieces so you'll remember you cut them from this pattern piece some of them are six by ten and some of them are five by ten so in the pattern i explain how to do this uh, one set of uh, zipper piece zipper pocket pieces at a time but i think in the video it will be easier if we do both pockets at the same time because it's really important that they're done mirror image. So to start, take the narrower pieces, so they're 10 inches by 5 inches, and flip them so that the 10 inch side is at the top. And then take your zippers and I want you to place them where the pulls are going in opposite direction and you place them centered along the top edge. So on this side, I have my pull going that way to close, and on this side, my pull is going this way to close, okay? And I'm just going to add a few clips, and then I'll go over to my machine, and I'll just baste these, actually I'm not basting, I'm sewing them in place, along the top edge with one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm gonna go over and sew these. Okay, both zippers are attached. So what I will do is I just wanna press the lining pieces away from the zipper. Now I will take the six inch wide by 10 inches high pieces and I'll, again, I'm gonna rotate them so that the 10 inch side is at, at the top. And then I'm just going to place these on top and I want the remaining edge of the zipper to be aligned with the top edge of that lining piece. And then you're doing the same thing, you're going to Clip it in place and then go over to your machine and attach that second lining piece with one quarter inch seam allowance. And do that for both pieces. 
Okay, so now the second lining piece is attached and I'm going to do the same thing. <clears throat> and I'm just going to press it away from the zipper. So at this point, you should have, when your, your lining pieces are uh, the right side facing up, you're actually looking at the wrong side of your zipper. And if you flip it over this way, you have the wrong side and the right side. Okay, so this is what we have at this stage. Now we're going to grab the front zipper panels. And I want to have the, the shorter, the narrower piece, so the five inch by 10 inch piece, that has to be beneath the front zipper panel piece. You want the longer piece here. And what I do is I line up this top edge with the top edge of my zipper pocket lining piece. And you might have to adjust the position of your pull. And you want this inside edge of your front zipper panel to be lined up with the edge of your zipper tape on the left side. And I need my pins. So I'm gonna pin this in place okay okay and then I'm going to do the same for this side so you want pull at the top with the zipper closed and then you have your narrower piece here on this side underneath the front zipper panel and lining up the top edges here and then the inside edge of your front zipper panel with this inside edge of your zipper tape and then again you pin it in place now we're going to go over to the sewing machine and we're just going to top stitch here along the the zipper pocket opening here just only here for now you're going to top stitch and then I just want to sew down the zipper tape uh, onto the lining piece here so you can just do a quick basting stitch along this edge of the zipper tape only so don't go to the fabric only the zipper tape with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance just along the inside edge of the zipper tape. And you do the same thing here and top stitch here. Okay, so I have both of the zipper pocket lining pieces attached and you probably can't see it, but when you're doing the top stitching here, you're going through all the layers, including the zipper and the lining pieces. So now I'm just going to flip them over so we can see them this way and then both of these wider lining pieces are going to fold this way and meet the other piece. And then you're just going to put them together. So you're not clipping the front zipper panel piece that, that is not attached to these lining pieces at all. And you do the same for this side. And we're going to go over to the machine again. Now, it's very important when you sew these together. So I'm going to show you this is the top edge. Sorry, that's just my iron turning off. Okay, so there's our top. This is the top edge. So when you're sewing the pocket lining pieces together, I prefer to sew them this way and I flip my front, my front zipper panel out of the way. 
and I start sewing here. I want to sew close to the, the remember the, the stitching that we put around the zipper pocket opening? So you actually want to start here, back stitch. You're sewing as close as you can to this zipper opening. And then you sew across, and then you sew all the way down on, on the longer edge of the zipper pocket pieces. And then again, you're going to sew across here and back stitch. Now, when you're getting to the bottom edge, it's not as important to get to uh, the stitching here that you you the stitching that you made around the zipper opening. That's not as important. But when you're at the top edge, you really want to start sewing as close as you can, because we need to trim all as much of this uh, seam allowance away as we can, so that it doesn't become a part of the the top seam allowance of your bag near the main zipper um, otherwise it'll become too bulky so I'm gonna go over and I'm just gonna sew this one and then I'll show you where the stitching is so that you understand uh, maybe a little bit better what I'm trying to say okay so I've sewn the uh, zipper pocket lining pieces for this side and I just wanted to show you what it looks like on the back so you'll see Along the top edge, I try to get fairly close to the, the stitching here from the, the stitching around the zipper opening. And then I went across along the side. And then here, you don't have to worry too much about going very close, but you do want to make sure that you get the end of the zipper tape inside. You want to sew on the inside of that edge so that you don't have uh, the raw edge of your zipper tape or your zipper inside your zipper pocket lining piece. So if I open this up, I see my zipper, but there's no there's no zipper end anywhere. And then you just trim the seam allowance. Make sure you don't cut your zipper panel because you will not be very happy. And I really just need to trim away this top edge because I don't want it to get caught in the seam allowance at the top edge of my bag. Okay, there we go. So that one is ready. And now I'm just going to go over to the machine and I'm going to sew up the zipper pocket lining pieces for the second half. Okay, so the second half is done. I'm just, again, I'm just trimming the excess zipper pocket lining from the top edge. Okay, now we're going to assemble these with the middle strip. Okay, so you need your middle accent strip. Um, I'm using cork and I will just start, I'm going to move my zipper pull to the center. So you're just going to start by attaching it to one half. Now, here's an this is the important reason why we're using a wider zipper tape. So you don't want to use a number three zipper. You want a 4.5 or a five, either one will work. Okay, and then I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm going to sew along this edge and you're going to use 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you're not using quarter inch, you're using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And you'll want to make sure that you're push, you push your pull out of the way because you'll have crooked stitching. So push your uh, zipper pull out of the way when you come close to the pull. Um, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, the middle strip is sewn to one piece. And now I'm gonna go over, I, if you're using fabric, you can press the strip away, but I'm not, I'm using cork. So I'm actually just going to pull it away from the zipper and I'm just going to top stitch along this line. And then I'll attach this edge to this front panel piece. Okay, so the middle strip is attached to this piece and I've top stitched here along the seam allowance. And then I'm doing exactly the same thing. Now, what's very, very important here in this step is that you want these 
these top and the bottom edge of your zipper opening, you want them to be perfectly aligned. If they're not aligned, you'll see, you'll notice that they're crooked. Now it is a bit hard to see um, at this point because you have to sort of picture uh, where the seam allowance meets to make sure that they will be aligned. So do your best to center them. And then attach and sew. I find if I just do a quick basting stitch and I and I like the alignment, then I'll sew it. If I'm not 100% with the alignment, then I will um, remove the basting stitches and, and reposition it. So I think that will work out quite nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that. Okay, so now the front of my bag is assembled. And now this is a really, before we finish this video, this is a really important step. It is very, very difficult to be 100 precise when you're piecing all of this together and have it match your back panel. You need to make sure that the front and the back panel are exactly the same size. So what I do at this point is I put them wrong sides together and you can see that coming along the top here that I wasn't as accurate as I should have been. So what I will do is I'm going to trim the front panel so that it matches my back panel. And don't be worried if you're off. <clears throat> it's completely normal. There's, it's just very difficult to be precise like that, especially when it comes to um, uh, the zipper. It's very difficult. So just trim away. And I'm going to, I don't want to trim my lining piece. So just trim away so that your front panel and your back panel matches. Sometimes your back panel might be a little bit bigger. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as they are exactly the same size. Now I really should be using a ruler and a rotary cutter. So don't, maybe don't do what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to move my pocket lining piece. Now if you have trimmed, you're going to want to uh, sorry, you're going to want to adjust the position of your the marks that you made for your uh, the rolled handle connectors. Okay, so what I will do at this point is I will take that pattern piece and I'll redo the marks and I want them to be the same for it didn't really change the position all that much okay so that's my final marks flip and adjust the marks on this piece, move this out of the way. Okay. And then I'm going to use this pattern piece to make the marks. You can use the back panel has, I think it has the marks. No, it doesn't. Never mind. Okay, and I use this to make my marks. And that way there, I know that my center marks on my side panels will be accurate and that my handles will be in the same location on both the assembled front and the back panel. Okay. And that's the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to assemble all the exterior pieces, uh, pleat the bag, attach the bottom, and then attach our main zipper.